Yang Jun is bound and determined to convince Misa to marry him, but interestingly, he seems to be losing sight of his original purpose, to keep her as his secretary. He's starting to feel some true discomfort at the idea of losing her, and not just as an employee. And Miso is so confused by Young Jun's sudden attentiveness that she doesn't seem to know what to think or feel. All she knows is that she's terribly confused. Episode 5 Recap Miso and Young Jun tumble onto her bed, landing with Miso on top of Young Jun, again. But this time he grabs her and hugs her tight, and says, just for a little while. Let me stay like this for a little while. From now on, I'm going to be madly in love with you. Miso is frozen for a moment, staring at him, then Young Jun abruptly lets go of her. He stammers that he read that in that romance book of hers, I knew he'd chicken out, and she jumps up, babbling praise for his fantastic memory. When Misa serves the ramayan, Young Jun complains that he doesn't usually eat food with all those chemicals. He's surprised that it actually tastes good, but he rears back when Miso adds a bite of kimchi, chastising her for doubling the sodium content. Then he tries it, and it's like a light bulb goes on, he stops complaining and just shovels the ram iron in as fast as he can. Before he leaves, he notes that it's the first time he's eaten food that Miso made. She tells him to go home and put some medicine on the cut on his lip, and he haltingly thanks her for today. Back inside, Miso realizes that this was the first time Young Dune has been inside her house, and she smiles. Her doorbell rings again, but this time it's her sister Pilnam with snacks. Pilnam notices the two Ramayan bowls, and when Misa says Young Jun was here, Pilnam whacks her and calls her crazy for feeding a man Ramayan in her home late at night. Young Jun goes straight to Yushik to ask if having Ramayan with Misa is a big deal, and Yushik says of course it is. He explains that a woman offering a man Ramayan at night is like announcing that they're dating, because it's usually an excuse to be alone together. He mimes a couple snuggling, and Young Jun nearly topples out of his chair at the thought, he. Seeing Young Jun's reaction, Yushik asks if something happened, but Young Jun claims that it happened to his cousin's college classmate. Lol, sure it did. But when Yushik looks away, Young Jun smirks to himself like a teenage boy. Pilnam accuses Miso again of liking Young Jun, and Miso's denial sounds weaker than ever. Pilnam advises her the people are happiest when they date on their same level, comparing a relationship between Miso and Young Jun to a bird and a dog dating. She says that someone rich like Young Jun could never understand the kind of life they led growing up, fighting over drumsticks instead of company shares. She sees Miso's downcast expression and says she just doesn't want to see her little sister get hurt. Misa replies, I know, but it's my problem. That night, it's Young Jun's brother Sung Yun's turn to have a nightmare, where a young boy cries for his mother in an old, abandoned house. He wakes with a start, and sits gasping for air. Young Jun calls Miso the next morning to ask if she's ready to leave. He tells her to hurry up and come out, and she's surprised to find him waiting to drive her to work. Misa runs out to his car, so anxious that she hooks a heel on the curb and hurtles right into Young Jun's arms. They both swoon a little when he catches her, and it's Misa who lets go first. They blink and stammer at each other in confusion, then finally Misa recovers and heads for the driver's side. Young Jun says magnanimously that he's driving, and even holds the passenger door open for her. She catches Young Jun staring at her with a moony expression while she's getting in, and he starts to say she looks pretty today. Then he stops himself, and says that if she wants to hear such things, she should dress more fashionably and not wear the same blouse several times a week. Wow, he just went from sweet to slappable in about three seconds. He hands Miso a bag with coffee and sandwiches inside, saying that his personal chef made them in case she hadn't had breakfast. Okay, back to sweet. Then he says she can even keep the paper shopping bag, like it's a huge gift, let's just call him even on this one. At work, it shows that young Jun is making an effort to think of Miso when he gestures her into the elevator first, mightily confusing her. He even makes a point to stand next to her instead of in front like usual, and Miso looks incredibly confused while he silently preens over his gentlemanly behavior. Alone in his office, a young Jun marvels at his own perfection, congratulating himself on looking great and having a warm, loving heart. Later Miso comes in to put more medicine on his lip, and this time she notices the way Young Jun gazes at her when their faces are in close proximity. 
She jumps back and tells him to put on the medicine himself, and he grumbles with disappointment that he'd rather she did it for him. Miso quickly changes the subject to work matters, but she gives herself a bad paper cut in her haste. Yung Jun jumps up, worried, and grabs the medicine to doctor her finger. He says it's repayment for her taking care of him last night, because he always repays favors. Young Jun turns his attention to her hand, and Miso is stunned by his utter focus on her welfare. He says that he'll take his reports on the tablet from now on, because paper is dangerous. Miso is still a little dazed when she goes down to make tea, wondering what's wrong with her. GR comes in and points out that she's steeping the packaging, not the tea bag, ha. Huh? Young Jun's mom is still upset over the fight between her sons, so when his urging to buy herself a limited edition handbag fails to cheer her up, ha, huh? she already bought it, he approaches Sung Yoon. He asks when Sung Yoon plans to apologize to Young Jun so their mom can sleep at night, and Sung Yoon promises he will soon. Dad also tells him to stop bothering Young Jun, who's very busy and who could affect the whole company if he's upset. Sung Yun goes to the Yum Young building to visit Mi So, who's annoyed at his intrusion. She tells him flat out that she's not glad to see him, and that she found his insistence on getting her phone number rude. He asks if he should leave, and she says yes, so he complains, that's too harsh, you asked me to see you by email first. Misa suddenly realizes that this must be Morpheus, the famous author that she's been trying to recruit for the Art Center opening event.